I kind of <laughs> totally lost it. You had, a, you had a thought there, and I think I just I ran just over it. Just... We are just tired. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. What a weekend this has been. Whew. If we seem like we're a little low on energy tonight, it is for good reason. I had a rehearsal with Pamela Makala right, to, right, right. Pre- to prepare for okay, right. a live music video shoot on Monday. By that I mean we are shooting audio and all of the tracks, or so all of the tracks of audio as well as live video, all at the same time. Mm-hmm. There's no room for error. Is right. my point. Um, it's very difficult. I mean, the point is to capture a live performance. Yeah. And so that's why we're doing it this way. It'll be the first time I've ever done this kind of thing on bass for sure. Mm. Um, so basically it's, it's for, you know, for promo, for booking more gigs, because she's been a singer songwriter, mostly performing solo or as dueling piano for a long time. Right. Right. Um, and now we, I think, how many are we? We're five. We're five piece band at this point. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. We started as a trio. This is a similar story to Adrian O band. We started as a trio. Mm. We're like, oh, we need to add this. We need to add that. So Pamela added Zoe Moth on guitar. Mm-hmm. Um, she's the one who plays bass for Mannequin and, and many others. Um, she's a great guitar player, too. And we also have a backup singer who sounds like she's going to be available most of the time, too. Oh, Kate, cool. Kate Farmer. Wow. So it's really filling out. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that was Friday was that rehearsal, and then we went to see Melissa Ivey's um, installation at the Denver Art Museum. Right. And Melissa Ivey is someone I used to play bass with. She's in the music scene. Um, she's an artist and a musical doula and does all kinds of things in music. And is where Shanti came from. Yeah, she's my cat mama. <laughs> Melissa's my cat mama. Yeah. i got to tell that story. I don't know if I've told that story in the podcast. I don't know if you have either. So, Shanti. Shanti the kitty. Who's, who makes an appearance on this podcast once in a while. So Melissa and I uh, just happened to talk on the phone one day, which is notable because I don't tend to talk on the phone with anybody. I don't just talk on the phone with people. Right. I don't, I don't call and right. say what's up. And, and you and Melissa are, are, are buddies. But we're buddies, not... but we're not like super close friends. But yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I used to play bass for her. So she moved to L.A. and then she moved back. And we, for some reason we just happened to talk on the phone one day. And she said, hey, I'm on my way moving back to Denver. And I was like, oh, cool. Is there anything you need? Anything I do for her? She's like, well, my cat's coming, but I don't have a place to put her. Can you take her for a few days? I said, sure. And then I checked with my landlord and he said, okay. And I have had her ever since. Yeah. (laughs) Because Melissa has been moving around a lot and travels doing, yeah. yeah, Being the the gypsy that she is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I love Shanti Cat. I know. She's the best. Anyway, I'm getting off track. <laughs> I'm just talking about our week, and I'm getting off track. Melissa, Melissa Ivey's in, uh, installation at the Denver Art Museum, Denver, yeah. which is a huge deal. I was so happy for That's her. That's a very big deal yeah. and very, very cool. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, we went to see Alyssa in her last show with the 17, uh, 17th Avenue All-Stars a cappella group right. at the Soil Dove. So that was fun. Then we got up first thing the next morning, went to the Performance High Denver studio to run the showcase rehearsal for the acoustic showcase that was tonight. Right. Then we went straight up to Cody's, well, to, to Greg's house to rehearse with Cody yeah. for next week's show. So we had a three-hour rehearsal at Cody's. And then we went home, grabbed our stuff, switched the gear out, and went straight to the Oriental Theater right. for a Petty Nicks gig at the Oriental Theater. Our kind of annual. Whew. Yeah. Petty Nick's good. Then we went to bed late and then got up this morning and you went and shot a music video with Have Zen. Right. I went to the Goose Town Tavern to set up for the acoustic youth and acoustic showcase, which started at two and ended at five. And it has been nonstop for three yeah. days in a row. Yeah. It really so. has. And it was for me Thursday and it was for me. Uh, yeah. You've been nonstop for a couple yeah, a month. it's been it's been pretty since you got back. Pretty hectic, yeah. You know, a few days here and there where I just kind of, you know, yeah. cooked or did something. Yeah. Gosh, what to get into other than fatigue? I wanted to talk about how Pamela's band prepared for the live music That's video shoot. That's a great shoot. one. Yeah. Um, since we know that there is, I mean, that everything basically needs to be played perfectly. Mm-hmm. We're not doing like, like you talk about layering, you start with drums on a click and then bass. And, right, right. And layer on, we're not doing that. We're capturing all of the tracks at the same time with video. So basically she just picked the three, the three songs we're going to record live and we ran them over and over. We ran them with a the metronome playing in the room. 
so that we right. Could, you mentioned yeah, so we yeah. could all feel where we were pushing and pulling. Which I did in my band in high school, and actually, now that I think about it, the band I was in right before No Address, Stash, we also would do that. Mm -hmm. Just running a click through the PA in the room, just so that everybody could hear it. I don't know that that's the most efficient way to do it, but that's one mm -hmm. way you can do it. Mm -hmm. um, so you guys did With and Without Click. Yeah, and we paid a lot of attention to note endings, like there are some little breaks where we want it to be really clean. Um, so we, you know, we... We would go through and, and mostly Pamela, but some of us, some of the rest of us would have a little note about, do you want me to hold, like, do you want this part to feel a little bouncy or do you want this part to feel like... Sure. You know, we were just paying attention to the details and right. really, really cleaning stuff up. So I think it's going to be some good video. But the focus was, we had, we've had two whole rehearsals focusing on these three songs. And yeah. that's, that's what's needed for this kind of shoot with like no room for error. Yeah. In my opinion. <laughs> well, and that's what, by and large, I mean, you you, know, you can find examples to everything, but that's, by and large, in fact, what, even up to Song Remains the Same by Zeppelin, which is a live concert movie in Madison Square Garden, um, they weren't doing that at the beginning of the tour. You know what I mean? That's what people used to go work the road to get stuff mm -hmm. totally dialed. So at the very least, two rehearsals seems like a reasonable... <laughs> Yeah. You know, uh, uh, amount of investment in making sure that that sounds good. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've only had, I don't know, two or three gigs on these songs. Right. So and it's a good band, and I'm sure you guys sound great. But, you know, when yeah. everything's under a microscope, it's, right. you know, you really hear stuff later. And there's the nerves that come from, oh, here's, here's Shanti Cat. Come here. Oh, I'm not changing her mind. Okay. Um, the nerves can, can get you, so you need to be overprepared. Yeah, in that too. <laughs> yeah, that that's an excellent yeah. point. Well, speaking of nerves, oh yeah, tonight. So we had the youth and acoustic showcase tonight, which means we had the first block of songs was like a youth recital. So it was right. the younger kids. So kids played so cute. Everyone was so cheered so loud for them. Oh my uh, gosh! So great. It, it, yeah, yeah. It was a Goose Town Tavern, right? Which we've lovely neighborhood tavern down there on Colfax. Yeah, they're really friendly. The staff is so nice there. Yeah, they're really super like nice. Them. Yeah. And then we did the Acoustic Showcase, which has really grown. It used to be some people playing with some guitar accompaniment and some, pe some people singing with a guitar accompaniment and some people singing with piano accompaniment. And tonight we had, well, Alyssa closed the show with her boyfriend playing electric guitar mm -hmm. through a whole rig. Um, that was an amp. It was like a, it was like a box. Is it is an X effects. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, it was just in a rack. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, gotcha. So. And we had a ukulele, and we had, I played bass, and we had um, some people accompanied themselves on piano. Adam Ravel played for others on piano. Joe accompanied some people on guitar. Guitar. Mondragon, Joe Mondragon. And some people played guitar for themselves. And uh, half then did... Right. Two acoustic guitars and vocals. Yeah, so it's it's gotten to be basically like everything but the drums. <laughs> yeah. Sort of a you can do what you want to do. Oh, tracks, of course. We yeah, had yeah, like, a lot right. of people playing to tracks. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah. And and some people mixing it up, which I thought was really cool, too, yeah. where they did like a, a song with just the acoustic guitar, and then they did a song with yeah. full backing. Um, so, I think it really has become a cool thing. Yeah. And I was about to get into the nerves, because... I'm sure I have, must have mentioned on this podcast how I am practicing slapping the bass uh -huh. with these two songs. I've been working on these two pretty challenging songs for six weeks, eight, six weeks now. I don't know. I mean, I've really just focused my practice on this one thing. The nerves will make you play worse or sing worse than you do in practice. That is for sure. Mm -hmm. The reason I wanted to do it was to... I don't know, set the example or, you know, go through the same thing that the students who are performing with us are going through, which is you're stretching your wings. You're doing something you've recently learned how to do. Right. You can do it at home most of the time, <laughs> some of the time, <laughs> and then you take it out on stage and see if you can do it in front of people. Right. And so I did exactly that and I did not play as well as I hoped. Right. That was probably the worst I've played in a couple of weeks. At least, it was but. it was very good. I mean, I noticed a few of the little things, but like yeah. overall, none of them were like really glaring, like a really wrong note things, or you know that wasn't that kind of. <laughs> I'm you know, glad to hear that because there were definitely some wrong notes. Yeah, well, and some it, wrong strings hit with my nervous right hand. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is. 
that is just a real thing. I mean, nerves are going to get you. Yeah. Um, they can even get you with a show that you've done a million times where it's not nerves like as in you are nervous, but you just get the adrenaline up too high and your hands are a little shaky and you're just hitting stuff wrong. Yeah. Uh, and I was absorbing the nerves of all of the students before me. So these showcases you, are always nerve wracking for me for many right. reasons. First of all, I want everyone to feel good about how they did. So I am being like empathetically nervous for them as I see them of course. on stage. And I'm like, go, yes, you can do it. And, but, uh, but I feel them. And then there's the logistics of the gig. There's do we have the DI and the mini cable? Do we have, did we, were we supposed to bring a door person or were they supposed to bring a door person? How much are the tickets again? Where are the, where are the people who are supposed to start the show? They're not here yet. Where's the sound guy? He's late. What, do we have enough chairs? I mean, Oh my gosh, I know. the number of details. And then on top of that, there's the public speaking aspect, which I've gotten good at, but it still makes me nervous. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah. yeah. No one loves I'm so speaking. used to you doing it that I just. <laughs> yeah. It's just one more thing. And so there was all of that leading up to, I played last. And so I had like these layers upon layers of nerves that have built up over the last couple of days. Yeah. So but you did, uh... granted, given all that, I guess I did okay. You did great. And the tone was, your tone was great. It was Thank just you. really, really Thank exactly you. what that tone should be. Thank you. Yeah. And I was really pleased that Nate, Nate made it over. Oh, it was so Nate nice of over. Nate to do yeah. that. Um, thanks, Nate. Um, great to <laughs> chat as well a little bit. I was thinking that, especially towards the end, you know, when Nate showed up, it sort of made me think, that was a, that was a room full of dudes in my parlance. That was a yeah. real room full of dudes. <laughs> me being a dude. Yeah, Alyssa being yep, a dude. Yep. But then you got Adam Ravel. Joe you Mondragon. Know, jo- Joe Mondragon. Jacob Larson just came oh, yeah. to Jacob's hang out. Oh, yeah, Jacob's family came so to nice. watch the showcase. It was so nice. You know, Nate Marsh was there. Yeah. It was, yeah. uh, you know, I'm probably even forgetting somebody, but it was like a room full. I was like, wow, this Doug is Webb. a... Doug Yeah, this is yeah. a room full of, like, dudes. Yeah. Like, real, real players. Um, and that is so so cool and I caught a lot of the performances Mm -hmm. everybody did great as always such a cool thing to do the coolest thing that I see coming out of the showcases now is some collaboration and some connection and that's what we're trying to foster at Performance High more and more now that we have the staff to do it you know, Ray Lynn is in charge of events and community and education. Right. And we've never had someone in charge of that stuff before. Right. So she's helping build ways for, for people to get to know each other. I mean, the showcases have always been that. But now we have an online social network called Mighty Networks where it's like, our, it's like you don't have to be on Facebook. It's our place where everybody can be. And that's where all of our announcements about showcase registration and showcase schedules is, are going to be. There's going to be rooms that people can talk in. Um, anyway, uh, so I'm seeing these collaborations happen. So like um, Jana and Michael, two of my students, met each other, I think, at the last showcase and decided to do a duet at this one. Super right. cool. So awesome. Nate and Adam caught up with each other at the showcase, and they are going to trade lessons now. That's so cool. That is so, so cool. Yeah, Adam's going to give Nate piano lessons, and Nate is going to give Adam bass lessons. And that's what it's all about. That is what it's all about. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the stuff from our show okay. at the Oriental. I felt, you know, more than anything, it went great. I thought it went great, too. It was an interesting crowd vibe as far as how we were connected to them. Uh, I felt like they were really into us. Pretty quickly on into the set, they were. Oh, they were. Yeah, they yeah, were, right. We were with right them. out of the gate. And actually, I mean, they loved us all night. The crowd didn't thin, and they loved us. But you were saying that there was a sense that we didn't have them like in the palm of their hand. Like they were having fun, but we weren't driving. We had them in the palm of our hand in terms of they were having this amazing experience, and we were guiding them through it, and they were following, and everything was going great. I just didn't feel like I knew where they were oh. mentally in the second set. Like I just couldn't really connect with in the first set. And usually not that I'm like some genius or whatever, but like I usually have a somewhat of an idea. Maybe I'm deluding myself, but I have somewhat of an idea that I feel where the audience is at Uh and I feel what they're looking for and what's going to get them and what kind of, what kind of mood they're in, all those things. I feel like I, I have a rough idea of what's happening. Maybe I can do something about, maybe I can't, but I sort of feel like I know where they are. And in that second set, 
I they were they were cheering, they were having a great they were time. Dancing, they taking, were yeah, re- responding was, to all the yeah. show things that we have worked in. They were responding exactly like you would expect them. Well, for example, on Landslide. Landslide. Right. Sometimes we've talked about it on the podcast. Brian and I will just step up with you. There's a little pause and it's a good natural applause break where people might cheer and we'll just step up to kind of put a little more pressure on the audience, kind of say like, "Hey, here's where you yeah. can say something back." And there was it was kind of scattered and then I turned to you and sort of like I was more up at the front of the stage, but turned to you instead of like leaning into the crowd, I was mm-hmm. leaning towards you. And that is what like turned the spigot on. Yeah, all the it way. was funny because like there's the there's the moment where I don't know if they're going to cheer or if it's gonna be a silent right. moment or what. So I, I take a second. There were a few little claps and I was like, oh, this one's not gonna grow. I'm gonna start singing. And I like took a breath to start singing and then you leaned toward me and then the crowd went loud. And 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 it kept growing from there. It was so interesting. It wasn't and, in the normal, like, And shape. it worked, but I don't know why it did. And it was just <laughs> complete experimentation. Uh-huh. I didn't know that that was going to make it happen. I just was uh-huh. like, well, the normal leaning into the crowd thing didn't work. Maybe I'll lean over here. <laughs> which which was what, what I mean about it. Like, the response was great. The response was amazing. I just didn't, I didn't quite feel like I could wrap my head around where they yeah. were. These things are so subtle. Like, oh, they're so how subtle. Many to- how many gigs do you have to play before you can even start tuning into this? I mean, I know you've played thousands of gigs, so you probably don't know how many it is. But, I mean, yeah. I feel like I've only, I've only gotten here during the Petty Nicks time. And, and for sure. Know, and plenty of times you don't know or you're just further from people or, you know, it, and maybe you don't even need to know. Maybe lots of people go out and you just play the best music you can play and that's great and, mm-hmm. you know, that, that whole thing. But... It was just an interesting experience to be like, these people are loving us. They're loving us. Not to be bragging, but like people were loving it. But I don't understand why. I don't understand. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know what they're keying on. Right. Uh, I think we had an interesting experience in the first set, which was the light show was amazing, but mm-hmm. unfortunately way too dark on the stage. Just a lot of moments of darkness or mm-hmm. complete darkness, but then strobes. And I would say there was literally one part where I, I was supposed to add some little lick somewhere and I like looked down and I was in pitch blackness to the point that like, I mean, I might as well have had my eyes closed. Like mm-hmm. I couldn't see a thing. And I just was like, well, I'm not playing that lick because yeah. I, I, there's no chance I'm grabbing that. That was another thing that I felt like didn't work with that whole lighting thing was they would do blackouts at the end of songs and then they wouldn't bring the lights back up. So we would end a song and they would just black it out and then there was no one for, the, the people couldn't see anybody to applaud to. Mm-hmm. And you were saying about the intro to one of the songs where you would have talked, but they had us in total darkness. Mm-hmm. So you weren't going to start talking in the dark yeah. and that, you know. I guess I could have and that would have made the lights come up, I suppose, thinking about it now. I, yeah, but thinking about it now. I guess I thought at the time that the lights would go back on in a second and I would talk then. But yeah. instead, uh, Ryan made the good choice to start playing the song. Yeah. He did, Ryan bulldozed a number of things where we just had some confusion or we were just in the dark. And there was, you know, there was one point where I'd forgotten to look at the set list. I realized how dark it was on stage. So I was looking at the set list any chance I had some light to be able to see it. Yeah. And one time I just forgot or I didn't look or I looked Uh and then forgot. And then we were in complete inky blackness and I was just like. I don't know what song is coming. Like, just, yeah. this will be And a you have surprise. to change guitars for every song, too. Right. And, <laughs> yeah. It was, it was, uh, the, the lights were intense. The lights were intense. Although seeing some of the video later from, particularly from the second set, looked unbelievable. Yeah. Especially for the Oriental. It looked. I mean, the Oriental always looks great. The Oriental yeah. always looks great. Yeah. And I've said a million times on this podcast, my favorite place. I love yeah. it. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you a funny story, though. Jeremy, who I'm always talk about big fan of him as a sound guy. Jeremy's a sound guy. Oh yeah. Yeah. I always talk about him. Uh, big fan of his work, big fan of, of working with him. And, and he actually does this really smart thing where he came back and he was like, Hey, do you really want to start at seven thirty? And we were like, yeah, sure. I was like, yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. And he was like, well, let me go check with the uh, front office, the box office. Mm-hmm. And I'll see how many of the pre-sales have actually arrived. Mm hmm. And then so, you know, he was like, well, let's push it back 10 minutes because it looks like a little low. And then he came back one more time and he was like, it's, it's doing okay, but 
you know, mm-hmm. and we were like, well, I was like, give us five minutes, we'll do it. Mm-hmm. And then he came back one more time and he was like, okay, it looks like these are about 77 in the house. Mm-hmm. And I thought he meant 77 people. Oh. And what he meant was 77% <laughs> of the pre-sale. So I thought we were walking out oh. to 77 people oh, and we walked see. out to, you know, 175 yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> and it honestly, like, it scared me. Like, it threw me off a little bit. I was oh. just like, I thought I was walking out to one thing and then we walked out and it was like kind of a full room and they were yelling. And I was like, <laughs> I thought people were still going to be in their chairs. And, and so it really threw me off. Not Jeremy's fault at all. It's just when he said 77, it makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. He would be thinking of it as percentages. percentages. Yeah. You know, let's let's push the show back until like 80-ish percent of people have showed up, which is so smart. A lot mm-hmm. of venues, they just go, we said start at 730, start at 730. Mm-hmm. It's really smart to look at like how many of the pre-sales have actually showed up. Mm-hmm. You know, so people don't miss part of the show. I never thought that they did that. That's that's a new thing for me. Great, It was a great show overall. Introducing a new sponsor, The Grateful Gnome. Oh, yes! <laughs> uh, which is a sandwich shop and bar right next to the Oriental Theater. Which Just we across the street. Yep. Kind of started a tradition of oh, eating over there. Their sandwiches are so good. Unbelievably oh. great sandwiches. We were joking that they were like... Those overdone deli sandwiches where you have like an inch and a half or two inches of solid deli meat <laughs> in the middle. But they have like the the really fancy, like, I don't know why it's so much better, like mayonnaise and mustard. It's not just like what you get at uh-huh. home, mayonnaise and mustard. Uh-huh. Yeah. So we love the Grateful Gnome. And if you are in the market for a sandwich, a beer, and a bunch of license plates on the walls that imply that you like the Grateful Dead, I, I would recommend the Grateful Gnome. <laughs> They, they have a real jam band aesthetic in there. I wonder if our server came over. I wonder if Vic put his name. He on, did, yeah, he did, no, he did. He I did. saw him do it. Yeah, I don't know if the guy came to the show, uh, but yeah, it was. You know, what was interesting too about that show. Normally, our friends and 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 people we work with, and this show, so many people that we knew showed up. I mean, of course, uh, Joanne was there, mm-hmm. Amelia was there, mm-hmm. some people that often come to our shows, but then people like Eric Golden came, mm-hmm. which Eric Golden being off on a Saturday night, like, what so are the odds? <laughs> yeah, Michael Pittman came, mm-hmm. Mia Hoeksma. Mia Hoxma uh, and Tyler Morse. Oh, that's the that's the big dog too. I, know. That's, uh, <laughs> I was nervous about Tyler, <laughs> and I was nervous about Eric too. But we were talking about, and we'd gone to see Alyssa, and she said something after the show right. where she was like, "Every time I think about you guys being there, like my stomach would flip." And I was the <laughs> same way on Saturday night. I knew Eric was coming. And I was like, oh, man, we're going to go out there and Eric's going to be there. And, like, my stomach would just turn over. Because <laughs> when you know, you know, we appreciate your your fans and your listening audience mm-hmm. so much. But then when it's people you work with and, A, you know they're going to catch anything that you did wrong. And, B, they're they're the people you work with. Yeah. You know, or you're, they're, you're like, you it's know. It's like they mean more. I mean, it's... That gives me extra appreciation for all of our showcase performers because they are all performing in performing front of their Performing in front their of their families. And and family. Yeah, right, exactly. And, and that's it, harder than, it, than performing in front of some screaming crowd of strangers. Right, it, it, really it is, is very different. <laughs> it's very different. <laughs> or you maybe, you see a few people in the crowd, but you know, like, I, I would, not that, you know, all the people that we always shout out uh, that come to a lot of those shows... We appreciate them so much, but we've seen them in a lot of shows, and there's a bit of comfort in, like, we know they like it. Yeah, they've come back, so they they've must They've come like back, it. so they must like it. So there's less nerves. But, like, the people who are seeing what you do for the first time, and they've heard about it for years. And you've talked about it, and they're important to you. You're like, yeah. I hope they like it. Yeah. And the t- <laughs> when Tyler walked backstage, and I was like, oh, I'm so glad I didn't know you were there for the last couple of songs. He was like, I caught the last two songs, and I was like... Yeah, and the whole second set, it was like it would, every once in a while it would rise up in the back of my head. Like <laughs> Tyler's watch. Tyler probably caught that because <laughs> he's you know he's developed. Tyler we've talked about was in Adrian O and Urban Dance Theory and uh, and and now uh, tours with Murder by Death and mm-hmm. he's just developed such an amazing musical ear for not only the timing and the whatever but tone. He's got a great mm-hmm. ear for tone and you know it's just like every once in a while you'd like strong a note and yeah like, and not only that but he said he's he's become really in tune with the audience and the interaction between band and audience no, not that it's his main thing but he's he's done some stage managing and yeah. that kind of stuff so he knows what's going on anyway it was an interesting thing that like just i guess that will never stop happening <laughs> 
that you'll just have yeah. some nerves when, yeah, you know, people show up for the first time or the people you work with, you know. And it was it, it was great, and they were nice, and they're your friends, and so of course you know they're not going to be like, oh, that sucked. But you just I don't know for some <laughs> reason it like gives you a little bit of like you're like a little yeah. on high alert. Yeah. At yeah. the same time, there's like I personally had a sense of pride of like hey, you finally are coming to see this thing we've been working on for so many years that has turned into a really good show. That has turned into a really good show. There's nothing to be... I'm also very proud of it. I didn't mean to give that impression. Yeah. You know, you're like, the dudes who you know, know. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, okay. <laughs> Fingers crossed in this one. And then looking ahead, I'm shooting music video with Pamela tomorrow, and we have three gigs. We have... Boulder Dinner Theater with Cody Qualls on Thursday. Thursday. And then Boulder. Boulder Dinner Theater with Petty Nix on Friday. Yeah. And then the Rialto Theater in Loveland on Saturday, which... Looking forward to. Oh, my gosh. It sold out so far in advance. Right. So far in advance. I was blown away. It sold out, I guess... Like, I don't know the date, but I think... Back in... Before the New Year. I think before the New Year. Yeah. yeah. They were... I, apparently, Vic told us last night that they said that in September, our show was selling better than the show's... In, in like November and December, right. October, November, and December. So th- I think that band is, <laughs> I think, I know that band is still on an upward swing. They're, I think they're going to be some some big things that come along for us one way or the other. Gosh, so f- sponsored by Performance High, Vocal yes. and Music Studio, sponsored by The Grateful Gnome. Hopefully they don't find out that they're sponsors. We can keep taking their sponsorship. <laughs> the, the sponsorship dollars, baby. These, these dollars. <laughs> You know, Whew. so yeah. busy week this week, and then we leave for New Zealand um, on Tuesday, the, ne- the, up. the next yeah. week, assuming up you get on the plane with me. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you one takeaway from my music video shooting. Oh, yeah? This, If you're looking to recreate that effect where the person is seemingly floating down the hallway backwards, yeah, I'd forgotten this trick from years ago, you slide your feet. You don't step because if you step, your shoulders bounce. But if you so, slide so you your you moonwalk. Feet, you moonwalk, and then you look like you're <laughs> receding down the hall. Okay. Yeah. I take it there's one of those shots. There's one of those shots in the video. Yeah. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate it. And I guess we'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye.